So what are the most important tools and equipment that you need for your sewing starter kit? Well, in this video, we're going to be breaking down in depth the most useful tools and where you can purchase these tools so you can get started on customizing your own clothes. But if you are new to the channel, my name is Javier and my passion is to help you improve your sewing skills and also expand your creativity. In this channel, we create garments for drag queens and I also share my personal projects for everyday wear. In this video, we're going to be talking about my personal recommendations for your sewing starter kit. Let's get into the video. Before we begin, I do want to talk about supporting your local small businesses. Go to a shop where they repair industrial sewing machines, which are like kind of the big ones, not the small regular commercial ones that you would buy at a store. Going to them right now would be the best option. Supporting your local small businesses should be your first option. Second option should be kind of like online stores. So check out Amazon or other links that I'll be leaving down below that you can check out to purchase some of these equipment, some of the equipment some of the tools it's just because we are in a pandemic during this video last option should just be any general store like joann's hobby lobby or michael's i'm sure you are all asking javier what is the best sewing machine and the truth is there isn't one however you shouldn't buy sewing machines that look like this or like this or like that or like that just my recommendation, don't buy those. And also don't buy computerized sewing machines. The ones that have like the microwave numbers on them and you can just program to the setting that you want. I just wouldn't trust those in case like some programming thing goes wrong and your sewing machine can't get fixed because of that or the numbers from the screen just fade away. I personally prefer a sewing machine that's all purpose. So one that has a zigzag stitch, one that has a straight stitch, one that has a stretched stitch and one where you can install buttonholes into your garments. Top brands that you will see out there are like Juki, Brother, Singer, um, Janome, Bernina is also one. There's gonna be a plethora of those, but those are kind of like the most known ones, I would say. Also check OfferUp. Some people may be giving out their old sewing machines, and if they do, make sure to ask them if it comes with all original accessories and the manual. Those are the top two things that you should always ask. Just remember the manual because the manual will tell you everything, the bobbin size that you need, um, any repair information that you need and how to oil the machine. Oh yeah, also one thing, the machine that I use is like a heavy duty machine by Brother, I think. And the one thing that caught me so off guard when I purchased this sewing machine is I read the manual and it said you don't have to oil the machine. Like you need like someone special to look at it and oil it for you. Big red flag once I opened it and by then I was just like, I just wanna sew. So I just kept it and it kind of makes this weird noise now. So it might be like dying soon because the one that I started sewing with is a Kenmore. Don't buy a Kenmore machine because they are out of business. It's a Sears brand. Um, I started off with a Kenmore and sometimes I would be sewing and it would just slow, 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 slow down. And it would just like kind of just stop and that was kind of like a sign to oil the machine. If your sewing machine is starting to slow down, you need to oil it because it's out of oil. It's just having a hard time. Like you have been here, like really force itself, like really trying to sew. So big red flag, make sure you're capable of sewing your sewing machine. I mean, oil your sewing machine, my bad. I'm going to be talking about threads. Yes, you're going to see a huge variety of threads when you're out shopping, if you go to Joann's, but like I said, don't go there. Go to your local shops and check them out. They might have a couple colors, but not too many. You should have a tag inside, but my tags just fell off. The text thread that you want to get, which is kind of like known as the thickness of the thread, is number 40. So get number 40 just because it's much of a thicker thread and you won't really run into problems with thread snapping when you're wearing something. Like if you stretch or you fall and you don't want to pop a seam or anything like that. Go for those and just get a black and a white color. That's all you need. That's kind of what I've been using forever. Just black and white. I'm not really too concerned about it matching the garment. I'm not really doing anything super flashy. Dress making shears. If you want to get yourself a nice pair of fabric scissors, which are not these. These are not fabric scissors. So as you can see, they're just regular standard scissors. How you can tell from comparing to fabric scissors is how flat they are from the bottom. They're like bent, so they're perfect for cutting fabric on tables. Here's another example, just in a different color. You can see the difference side by side. You can also buy these guys. I will be adding a link to these guys. Someone came in our classroom with these and everyone was obsessed and we all decided to buy some. 
They're about $20 on Amazon, a great price. They're gold, they look really nice. And then you have another pair of these guys. These are much bigger. If you have a bigger hand, I would recommend buying these. I have a small hand, so they really don't do much for me, but they're really big. As you can see, they're flat at the bottom. Scissors are typically just eight inches long from here, and shears are approximately nine inches long. So as you can see, if I line them up, you can see the difference in size. Fiskars is a well-known brand. They can range, they can be between like 12 bucks or so. If you go to a sewing shop, they might have some for cheaper or more expensive. Check them out and get yourself a nice pair. Thread clippers. So these are thread clippers. They're super handy when you're sewing. It's a black pair. You can find some like this. These are a little bit more expensive. So they do kind of have a spring right here where they help you just spring up. So it's not a big deal. And they are super sharp. So that's why they have like this little protective thing right here. So you can be more safe when you're sewing. You can find some like this as well. They're super cheap. If you go to your shop where you can buy industrial sewing machines check them out they're only like two bucks or a dollar these are probably like eight bucks or so um you can buy other ones too they will be like four bucks but these go up to like a dollar or two dollars so um rather get yourself nine of these than buy one of these for nine bucks you know what i mean buy them they're super useful just because when you're sewing on the sewing machine and you're done you don't really want to grab your scissors and like be far apart from the threads and just like snip something off and you have this just pull the thread snip it put it down you're good it's not taking up too much room in your area so this is why they're super handy if you can buy more buy more because you are gonna have a ironing station probably and then your sewing station and maybe if you're cutting anything or laying anything out i'm um, just having one in each area is gonna help you from running back and forth trying to grab it and be like oh I have to go back and grab it go back and grab the other one just buy just buy three you'll be good with three but having a backup pair is always good in case you lose it and you're not freaking out or wasting time trying to find it up next is Taylor's chalk looks like this it's a little messed up yes yeah, so this is Taylor's chalk just to mark all your patterns when you're laying them out flat they have it in white and they also have it in a blue color you will also find these two type of marking pens out there. They are for fabric. One is just kind of like a water soluble ink pen. So this does appear when you wash your fabrics. And they also have a disappearing ink one. Just remember this does disappear. So if you're referring something or marking a point that you need to know and you kind of just forget about it and it's like hours later, it's gonna disappear. One of my favorite marking tools are these guys and they are chalks in a stick. You kind of just mark it. I could do a line probably on here. So you can mark a line. You may not be able to see it because it reflects. So it does work one direction. If you go the other direction, it's not going to work. And if you force it, you will break it. And then you're going to have to go buy a new one. Buy two if you can, or just buy one. These are just amazing just because you get a fine line. And with this, you kind of just get thick lines and thin lines. So... This is kind of my second option, and this is my first option. You can buy these at Joann's. Um, they're about, I think, seven or eight bucks. I don't know, I don't remember. But get a coupon if you can, and you'll find them in the quilting section. Always get a coupon, you'll save yourself some money, and make sure you use it correctly. Next up is straight pins. You're gonna need yourself some straight pins so you can pin down your fabric. So these are actually different sizes and they are used for different purposes. I started off with the white pins and then I moved on to the yellow ones because they're longer so you there's more to grab for the long pins but I my conclusion is just to use the fine pin ones just because the reason why I love them so much is they are fine. They don't cause much damage to your fabric. Which with these guys, since they are thicker ones and they will like poke holes and kind of like possibly ruin your garment in the future. And if you ever need to sew over them, um, you'll be fine. There's less of a chance of breaking one of your sewing needles with the fine ones. So these are my go-tos for now. These I just use for like pattern paper and stuff when you're drafting or when you need to move darts around. 
Now let's talk about sewing needles. You're gonna find a variety of sewing needles if you go out to like a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby. You're gonna see a bunch out there. Make sure you get the correct needle for your project. It will say there if it's for knits or for denim or for vinyl or for heavy duty fabrics, lightweight fabrics. Always read the label, it will tell you what it recommends. But they also sell them out like this. These are like your all purpose ones. And I always buy a pack of two because if you break a needle, you do have backups in here, but I always have backup backups so I don't have to go to the store all the time. Get yourself some ones. I do store them in these guys. You don't have to do this. I bought this at Joann's as well. I used to work at Joann's, so that's why I kind of always say Joann's now. I bought these at Joann's. I do mark the numbers on them so they all are separated. These are my heavier ones and the ones that are being used and not being used. Keep them in here. You don't have to or just keep them in your packet. And they do have them in for individual sizes if you do need an individual size. These are 70-10s. Those are the ones I use the most or go through. And I also go through 60s and 8s as you can see. So those are the ones I use the most because I do work with knit fabrics and stuff. Which are known as stretchy fabrics. Up next is get yourself a see-through ruler. So this is a see-through ruler. If you've never seen one before, this is how it looks. See-through as you can see, it has some measurements. And these are the most common measurements that you will be needing. These little lines right here stand for 1 16th of an inch, stand for 1 8th of an inch, and then this stands here for half an inch, and this is a whole inch right here. This is super helpful because you're gonna need to like do 5 eighths of an inch seam or measure out a quarter inch or three quarters of an inch. This has everything and this kind of just replaces this guy to measure your seams. So you can always just move this and measure from the edge. Um, I will tell you this, this does rub off eventually. This is my second one. And once I bought my second one, I just got clear nail polish and coated the thing on top. So now it doesn't like fall apart. Buy yourself a see-through ruler so you can replace this guy. This is super helpful too. You can always use it. I don't use it, but you may need it. And buy like four or five of these if you can. They're like a dollar or two dollars. Not too bad if you're on a budget, just buy one. That's all you need. And let's move on to the next one. Up next is this guy. You guys may not know this, but it is a magnetic guide. It magnetizes to your sewing machine. So if you need to um, sew like a quarter inch, just place it next to the quarter inch line. It will magnetize and just sew against this side and you'll have a perfect quarter inch throughout your whole garment if you need a quarter inch for your whole garment. Now move it to the right if you need it for 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance which is the most standard seam allowance that you will be sewing out there. So if you're a beginner definitely buy one of these. Some people also use tape. They just grab some tape, colorful tape and they just do it from one end of the machine to the other and just go on that line so they're just sewing consistently. But this is pretty cool just because you can remove it and it's not in the way. And if you don't need it, just take it off. Up next is bobbins. Yes, you're going to need bobbins for your sewing machine. These are plastic bobbins right here. That's why you want to have your owner's manual to make sure you are buying the correct size for your machine. Because there are different sizes for each machine. Some of them have like more of like a... More of like a dome curved on the top. They also have some in metal. So if you need a metal one, I started off using metal ones for my sewing machine because that's what it required. You're gonna need a good amount of these just depending if you sew with different colors. But extra set just in case you're going through a project and you don't wanna like, instead of having to thread your machine, you can just take one out and then just put it in and then just start, continue sewing. Up next on my list is a measuring tape. Yes, get yourself a 60 inch measuring tape. You are gonna need one when you are sewing. Trust me, when you are laying out your patterns, you need to make sure everything is well balanced. So you're gonna need a measure from your green line from one side to the other side to make sure everything's parallel from the salvage edge or the, the fold area. And this is gonna help you measure that from your pattern from one end to the other end to make sure everything is well balanced and not everything is like off grain and things start twisting when you start putting them on. You can buy them in different colors. Don't get one of these guys, which was like my first one. 
This is a 120 inches one. I when I saw it, I was like, I need it. The more the merrier. The more the better, of course. But this is a problem. It's too long. You're honestly just gonna be like have it around you and then it's just it gets in the way. You're just like, where's the other end? Because you grabbed the wrong end and you're just like, okay, grab the other end. Okay, cool. The other end. So it's just a waste because you're just having to grab. Yeah, I just don't do that. A 60 inch is perfectly fine. That's all you need. And yeah, let's move on to the next item. The last item on this list is gonna be your best friend. Like your very, very best friend. Kind of like your annoying mom though, or your annoying guardian. It is a seam ripper. This is gonna be the one tool that you will probably use the most. It takes out the seams. If you want to take a garment apart, just stick in between the seams and it'll snap the seam and you just unsnap all the seams that you need to. Or if you make a mistake, which is the main reason why you will need this. It is the one tool that you're always gonna need to have your kit. This is the brown one. They also have little tiny ones, whatever you prefer. I love using the small one just because it's in my hand and I'm not having to grip everything. Get yourself just one. That's all you need unless you lose them. Definitely get yourself one of these. This is going to be the most important tool that you will need when you're sewing because you are going to make a lot of mistakes and it's fine. It happens all the time. I make, I make them pretty often too, so don't worry. It's going to happen always use these and yeah so those are my recommendations for your sewing starter kit i will leave a link below for some of the items where you can buy them online or websites that you can buy some of these items online but i think that kind of wraps it up for the, today's video if you enjoy sewing channels consider subscribing to mine if you enjoyed this video make sure you leave a like comment the video if you have any questions thank you for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one